Ah, yeah, welcome to this video playing Grandmaster Prophylax from Norway. This is Live Ogard, right? Yeah, Live Ogard. Let's go for the Nimzo. Trying to test some lines from my book. Yeah, we probably will get uh, the main line of the hoop now with bishop c3 and uh, d6. Hmm. Yeah, this is a very rare move. Okay, I can theoretically at least uh, capture twice on d5. But he's got bishop h7. This is um, probably not the way to go. Also, I can take on c3. Hmm. Yeah, let's let's play this first. It doesn't really matter yeah. which order I play this. And e5 next move. I don't think he can uh, deviate from that. Probably will castle or play a bishop somewhere. Bishop e3 or so. Or this one. Yeah. And then e5. The question is, however, should I play e5? Maybe I can stay flexible. And uh, wait for a moment. Mm, okay, so he's not going for g4 or, or anything like that. I wonder... Yeah, but this is probably a bad idea. Something like rook e8. I, I should probably simply, simply close the position, transposing to normal Hubner setup. I probably should say Hübner. I mean, I actually know to how how to pronounce that, as, as it is a German name. Uh, okay, so his uh, idea is probably to play g4. I I want to move the knight and play f5 to get some counterplay, and. Um, the question is to go to e8 or to h7. I'm, I, I use I use the h7 square now. I want to anticipate g4 so that on g4 I can use the weakened squares on g5 and h4. Okay, yeah, he's protecting f5, covering f5. So I need to um, I need to prepare it. Oh, interesting. Maybe he wants to play f4 even, but I can always take and play f5 if he goes f4. And unless he's got uh, e5 now or some other spectacular move, um, it should be it should be decent now. For black, mm -hmm. maybe queen g2, but on g2, queen g2, I can actually take e4. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Don't even need to, to move the knight. Yeah, then this is probably even good for black. I can just take and play bishop f5 now, or is there um, some better move? Uh, probably not. This is also simply uh, simply good. He's got weak pawns here on uh, on f4 and h3. Yeah, this this looks like a good move. The knight will be excellent on f5. All with the queen. Yeah, 
I don't know. I don't think he can avoid the queen trade. No. So we enter um, the technical stage. White is, is is basically outplayed. I just need to to pick up the pieces now. He's uh, full of um, pawn weaknesses. If I exchange rooks at the end, I should win the c4 pawn or something on the queen side. Yeah, this is a bit of a model game for the for the hoopner. This is what you you want in this opening. Knight f8 is my next move. Um, probably still, yeah. I want to go d7, b6, and he needs to um, exchange at least one rook now. Yeah, now the c6 pawn is is uh, the problem. C6, the c4 pawn, c4 of course. <laughs> he has no way to defend this. This is the problem of this bishop. This is a very, very bad piece on d2. It just um, is limited by his own pawns and it's, it's very passive. Yeah, he's got no way to defend it. He can play bishop c1, knight b6, knight d2, yeah. But there's knight e3. Or is there something better even? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, it should be enough. There's even d5 uh, hanging now. Yeah, this d5 pawn is um, somewhat isolated. It cannot be um, be uh, protected by a pawn. Um, okay, how to do this now? It's not. Um, I mean, okay, it's. Uh, he can. He can. Maybe play bishop f4. Hmm. Ah no, I need to. Yeah. I know now. I know it. <laughs> I need to go here to f6. This is uh, the right way to go. Knight f6 and just win this pawn. I wasn't. I didn't see the maneuver at first. This is just uh, good. Uh, here. Mm. Yeah, probably anyway. Protected uh, pass pawn is uh, not bad. So, uh, knight e5. Hmm. Knight e5, if he takes, am I actually winning? Mm, yeah, I'm yeah. winning. Okay, it's a bit stupid because he's got three seconds, but I wanted to make sure that I really win. Yeah, I, I, I pick up f5 now. If he goes king, king f6, d6, I return and uh, get the d-pawn. So it's a winning king of the end game. Okay, yeah, this was a nice game where um, the weakness of the c4 pawn at the end uh, 
was the decisive factor. The problem really was that um, when he played f4 here, and the problem was that here he doesn't have a good way to prevent this, these two pawns to be exchanged, and then he's sitting on all these weak pawns. He really needs to um, make sure that he can play e5 also in this position. And, um, and this is really um, really problematic for white already. He's, he doesn't have a, a good way to, to, to make something uh, concrete happen. This is a thought due to this um, not really working. Or bishop f5, it's uh, both good. If I manage to get rid of the bishops here, it's um, it's very, very difficult for white. The c1 bishop is such a stupid piece. Yeah, thanks for watching.